four weeks ago when the Cleveland Browns met the Houston Oilers. It was a game with immense playoff implications. When it ended, we saw just how far Cleveland has come and just how close Houston came to being embarrassed. Only Warren Moon's last-minute magic averted a disaster. Today, in the rematch, the story is different. The Oilers have finally clinched the Central Division Championship, while the Browns are clinging to a faint hope of going to the playoffs. So the test will be for Houston. After a long season of vicious hits, can the receivers withstand more punishment? Can the Oilers win on the road? Can they play in the cold? Can they turn back a team looking for revenge? Today, the playoff-bound Oilers look for the answers. NBC Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Houston Oilers versus the Cleveland Browns. Here in Cleveland, the wind's expected to be whipping across from Lake Erie later on this afternoon. Could be a factor with the forecast calling for snow later in the day. The current temperature at 29 degrees. And at stake today for Houston, the AFC's number two seat in the playoffs, which would mean a first-round bye and the host role for a second-round playoff game. Home field advantage throughout appears to be a long shot. Cleveland with slim hopes to earn a wild-card spot, but they are still alive. Must win this afternoon to remain in the hunt. Hi everybody, Marv Albert along with Paul McGuire and for the Houston Oilers today as good a test as they will face in that they feel they uh, certainly have a terrific shot to make it to the Super Bowl and if they do get that far they probably would have to go through Buffalo under adverse weather conditions in Buffalo. Well I was talking to Warren Moon yesterday Marv and he said the one thing about this weather is the team that practices in it has a distinct advantage. Now, I'm not saying that they're taking this game lightly or the game next week against the Giants lightly, but it'll enable them to go through bad weather and have a chance to look at Buffalo later on. If they want to advance to the playoffs, they're going to have to, as you said, go through Buffalo. And Bernie Kozar was telling us at practice yesterday he does not care about the temperature, the snow, or the rain. He said it's the wind off the lake that makes it so tough, but he feels it should be tougher for Moon and the uh, run-and-shoot offense of the Houston Oilers. Cleveland has won the toss, and they will receive. Houston has won the last three against Cleveland, including the game on November 17th at the, the Astrodome, coming from behind to win it, 28 to 24. Joe Morris and Lynn James are back as Al Del Greco gets set to kick it off. The Houston Oilers last week beat Pittsburgh 31-6 to clinch their first ever AFC Central Division title. Following the losses to Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, there was much concern in Houston. Cleveland Browns last Sunday lost to Denver. Here's Morris on the return and reaches across the 25-yard line. Johnny Meads involved on the tackle. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler bring you this NFL game of the month. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. So, the Browns start out from the 26-yard line. Bernie Kozar, who did not have a good one last week, did not have much help from the offensive line, had very little time to throw the ball. Here's Morris peeling off. And Kozar throws to Morris. And he's run out at the 36 by Johnny Meads. Now look at that Cleveland offensive line at the tackles. Tony Jones and Dan Fike at the guards. John Reenstra and the rookie Ed King, who had a rough one against Ray Childress in that mid-November meeting in Houston. Mike Bathers, the center. Kozar at quarterback. Ford and Mack are the running backs. And the Houston Oilers talking quite a bit about Leroy Ford, who in that last meeting had a career high of 10 receptions. It is a first down for the Browns. We're just underway in Cleveland, and it's Kevin Mack. Stopped by the left defensive end, William Fuller. A tremendous front seven for Houston. Fuller with 12 sacks among the leaders in that department. Al Smith having a Pro Bowl season. Latham and Meads have played exceptionally well. 
Dishman and Johnson at the corners. McDowell and Orlando are the safety men. It'll be a second down and six at the 41. is Ford on the slant. Al Smith, who had 12 tackles against Cleveland last month, made the stop. Now, you mentioned Leroy Hoard, and the one thing that the Cleveland Browns want to do is get that man right there, one-on-one -on, -one on a linebacker or a defensive back, because they like to get him the ball downfield, not necessarily deep, but somewhere in a gray area, an open area, Hit him with the ball and then let him run because the defensive secondary of the Houston Oilers is suspect as far as tackling is concerned. He is so difficult to bring down. He told us uh, yesterday at Michigan he was strictly a blocking stop and one who blasts through the middle. That is dropped by Langhorn. He was wide open. Ricky Langhorn. Very much in the doghouse earlier this season. Uh, not happy with his role. In fact, he was even inactive for one game. Well, this is a, this is an example of when you take a look. You now, that's Smith there, the linebacker. He's not covering Langhorn. Believe me, he's not. But they were so aware of Horde coming out of the backfield that, that the safety went towards him and forgot about Langhorn coming down the middle. Matt Coleman is back, awaiting the punt from Brian Hansen, who had an excellent game last week. That was almost blocked. Coleman let it go. Looked at first as if he called for the fair catch and let it bounce. It is a 49-yard punt. The Oilers have had difficulty in the punt return game. Ernest Givens not back because uh, he's been playing with the protective device after he uh, had his nose broken by Wes Hopkins and Coleman had difficulties earlier in the season. Why you talk about why they didn't catch the ball? Cleveland had good coverage, and there's no sense in taking a chance. Let the ball drop. They have the ball, what, about the eight-yard line. That's not too bad. And Houston will start right there. Warren Moon at quarterback. This is offensive line. Max Munchett, Matthew Dawson, and Williams. Alan Pinkett, who has been running well in recent weeks, along with the 5-4. And it's a first down from the nine. Here's Pinkett. He just did get back to the line of scrimmage. The Cleveland defensive unit sparked up on that first play. Eric Turner, the strong safety, made the stop. Jack Pardee telling us last night he feels that Turner eventually will be a Ronnie Lott type player. Well, that says a lot this early in his career, but he, he is an intimidating tackler. Eric Turner, Cleveland's number one draft pick out of UCLA. The auto starting out at the noisy end of the stadium. Right in front of the dog pound. Yeah, well, that's kind of empty. Some of those puppies stayed home today. And Oilers run it down. The ball is caught up. The Oilers able to recover. Bruce Matthews able to get to it. a time when you just have a little bit too much confidence in your offensive line. Now, I know you've got a bunch of all pros up there in front, but watch Moon now. Here's Moon, but underneath on the bottom is Michael Dean Perry, number 92, is the guy that takes Moon's feet out from underneath him. The ball goes down, but Houston gets it back, and now you've got third and about almost 12. Houston back at a seven. The Browns defense has come a long way this season under new head coach Bill Belichick. And Moon goes incomplete. Oh, Haywood Jeffries. Well, I don't know. I don't know if, if it would be 80 degrees if Jeffries could have held on to this ball because Moon just stepped up and fired it. And that ball flew off of Jeffries. There's just no way that he's going to catch it. Watch how quick the ball gets to Jeffries. Now, he's downfield. That's Jackson's 41 release of That ball was flying. He just, that's a little frustration on Moon's part. Haywood Jeffries with 89 receptions to lead the NFL. Greg Montgomery back. And getting set to punt to Webster Slaughter. Slaughter has to 
to backpedal. And he's hit out at the 44, 47-yard punt and a 10-yard return. Scott Kozak with the hit on Slaughter. Got on that last pass to Jeffries. <laughs> he had all the velocity yes. he needed. It's a first down at the 43-yard line as Cleveland has taken over. No score were early in the first. He dropped by Kozar, and it's deflected back to him, and Kozar runs the couple. Doug Smith got a piece of it. You know, there's a situation there. Bernie is smiling, and, and, I, and when, they, when they look at it, they're going to say, knock the ball down. Doug Smith gets his big old arm up in there and knocks his ball down. It comes right back to Kozar. But here's the situation. Just knock the ball down. It's an incompleted pass. There's no sense of taking a beating. Fuller comes in number 95 and makes the tackle. But Bernie picked up a yard. I don't think it's worth it. Second down and nine at the 42. Michael the thriller Jackson now lined up in the slot to the left. The lone defect is Leroy Hoy. with the completion to the tight end Scott Galbraith hit by Marcus Robertson the rookie from Iowa State and the Browns pick up a first down this is just a super pass by Bernie Kozar now watch Scott Galbraith he, when he gets out he moves to the outside they're playing man to man on him Robertson is, is trying to play man to man number 31 but the play is good and they're going to measure it, but I, I got to believe with, you said that it is a first down because he was far enough downfield for it. All right, here come the yardsticks. No. You lied to me, Mark. Sorry, my naked eye. <laughs> has betrayed me here. It'll be a, a second and inches. Now check that, a third down, third and inches. There's Jim Eddy, the very active defensive coordinator for the, the Houston Oilers. Now this is a situation too with the Browns and they know that you know they're in field goal range, or close to field goal range. But it's a situation where even you can run play action here because if you have to go on fourth down, you only have, what, about six inches to make it. And the long setback is Kevin Mack. Left to Slaughter. Is to the left. And here's Mack picking up the first down. Al Smith on the stop. See, now that time, Kozar called an audible but i gotta believe that they had a pass play called on third and short yardage and then when kozar read that they were they were sitting in there waiting for pass knew the best place to go was to mack up the middle or right off tackle to pick up the first down which they did now they got first and ten at about the 31. and they're back to the two running backs mack and horde 88 langhorn in motion Kozar again to the tight end, Galbert. He is short on the first down. Al Smith made the stop. Al Smith in his fifth year out of Utah State leads Houston in tackles. Well, take a look at Scott Galbert again now. He goes back and, and, and you're putting a linebacker on him now, which is not fair for the linebacker, Al Smith, number 54, because all the tight end is supposed to do is go down and work his way either right or left. Wherever the linebacker is, just go away from him. Get yourself hooked up open. He is not the primary target. He's the outlet man. And Kozar looking at a second down and two at the Houston 24. Penalty marker down as Mack is able to unleash down to the 15 and has a first down. The strong safety Bubba McDowell made the stop. The referee is Jerry Markbright, and that's the first flag of the day. Offside, number 95, defense, lined up at the neutral zone. Penalty is declined. First down. 
So that is William Fuller called for the offside. And the Browns with a first down at the 15-yard line. Let's check out the Dr. Pepper 10-minute ticker. Dallas with a 3-0 lead on Philadelphia. Atlanta 2-0. New England with a 3-0 lead over the Jets. If the Jets win, Cleveland and Seattle would be eliminated. If the Jets lose, they can be eliminated with a Miami victory later today. As Kevin Mack hears it from the crowd again stopped by Al Smith when you Mike Babb gets an excellent block on Childress look at the center 61 he just takes Childress and throws him out of the hole now that's hard to do because what the Browns know that they have to do is double team Ray Childress number 79 that time their center Mike Babb, Babb number 61 handled him all by himself Seven yard advance, a second down and three at the eight. Six fifty to go in this first quarter with no score. Kozar completes the hole for the touchdown. You want to see a mismatch? <laughs> you, you got William Fuller, the defensive end, trying to cover Leroy. The blitz was on up the middle. Bernie Kozar read it, got the ball out the horde. The man they were worried about, when we talked to the Houston Oilers yesterday, that man, 33. And then covering him with a defensive end, that's impossible. I don't care what your defense is, the defensive end is not going to cover that man. You're going to have enough trouble with a linebacker trying to cover him. And that is 11th touchdown of the season, nine as a receiver. And as I mentioned earlier, he had 10 catches, a career high in that earlier meeting as Matt Stover puts it through seven plays, 43 yards, and Cleveland is up 7-0. Brought to you by Starter. Look for the stars and you'll find Starter. By Mitsubishi, bringing you a full line of award-winning automobiles. Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. By Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. And by John Nuveen and Company, quality tax-free investment since 1898. Strong drive by the Cleveland Browns and good work by the offensive line, an offensive line that had difficulties last week against Denver. Alan Pinkett and Pat Coleman back for the kickoff by Stover. Cleveland with a 7 nothing lead. Here is Pinkett on the return. Out to the 25 and run out of bounds across the 30. All right, Marv, let's take a look at it. Now, this guy down on a line of scrimmage in a down position is William Fuller. He is going to cover Leroy Horde coming out of the backfield. This is almost impossible. Watch this. He has to come out of a stance and then cover the back coming out of the backfield. A linebacker can't do that. Now, when I said the blitz was on, Al Smith, number 54, is coming right up the middle. Bernie reads it, gets it out to Leroy Horde, and it's touchdown. Cleveland seven, and Houston nothing. With six and a half remaining in the first quarter. And the Oilers start out from their 32. Moon with the time, and overthrow intended for Tony Jones. Double covered by Frank Minifield and Eric Turner. Minifield is back in the, in the starting lineup, back from a shoulder injury, telling of both shoulders have been, have been a problem. This is first start in five weeks. One of the things, uh, talking to Frank Minifield yesterday, he is the only guy in the defensive secondary of Cleveland who's playing man-to-man. -man. Everybody else is playing zone. But they have enough confidence in Minifield, even though he has two bad shoulders, now he's on the outside one-on-one -on, -one on Tony Jones. And Cleveland's sec secondary has been ripped up by injury right from the start of the season. It's a second and ten off the draw. Pickett is stopped. Up at the line, Alan Pinkett hit down by Michael Dean Perry. There he is, number 92, a man with exceptional quickness and a man who's also bothered by an injured shoulder. Yeah, but he said that's just part of the game. <laughs> got, you know, they got a chance of going to the, to, the, to the playoffs, a slim chance, and here's number 92, Michael Dean Perry. Watch this. Gets off the block, gets onto the play. That's just outstanding, and he, and he is hurt. 
It's a third down and nine. Could not be handled. Ernest Gibbons was wide open. So Moon is 0 for 3, and he has been sacked once as their second series comes to a close. Well, when I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this play here, and I'm telling you now, when you see Gibbons come in, watch this. He's looking all over the place. He's looking for the guy to hit him. Remember, he got drilled in that Philadelphia game. Broke his nose. You can see the bandage on his nose there. But he's looking around, and you can't play this game looking around. You got to look at the ball. And Montgomery with the line drive punt. Here comes Webster Slaughter. And he was turned around as he reached out to the 35, a 47-yard punt, and a 15-yard return again. It's Kozak on the stop. We'll be back in Cleveland in a moment. Well, here comes the snow. <laughs> hey, this is Cleveland. And a first down at the 36-yard line. The Browns with a 7 nothing lead on the Oilers as they take over. Kevin Mack trying to go to the outside. Could not make the turn. Al Smith and Johnny Meads able to cut him off. Ooh, 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 ooh. Said Houston has trouble on the road. Well, they're three and three this year, and it's only the first quarter. But that doesn't look good. But very early, very early. And the, the Houston Oilers have had their difficulties out of the the run and shoot, playing uh, in bad weather conditions. And as you mentioned earlier, a good test with the game here today, and then they face the Giants at Giant Stadium next week. Kozar again taking that deep drop and complete for the fifth. A short pickup. Leroy Ford was met immediately by the middle linebacker, Al Smith. Let's uh, check the 10 minute ticker. Now Dallas 5 0 over Philadelphia. The winner here can clinch a wild card with a, a victory next week. Atlanta to win the NFC West with with a win today and a New Orleans Saints loss tomorrow night. New England still 3-0 over the Jets, a game that the, the Browns are interested in. Pittsburgh 7-0 over Cincinnati, and uh, that a game with no playoff ramifications. Third down and four, and Kozar throwing the long ball. Incomplete off the hand of Reggie Langhorn. It was covered by Bubba McDowell. Well, Bubba McDowell just nailed Reggie Langhorn. And this is one of the things, I guess the best expression is when the quarterback kind of hangs you out to dry a little bit. Going down the middle. Here we go. Reggie Langhorn up in the air and then bam, right in the ribs. I mean, that smarts and that is a clean legal hit. Reggie Langhorn, shake it up by this man, Bubba McDowell, who's having his best season. Timeout on the field. We'll be back in a moment. Brian Hansen back in punt formation from his 26. Pat Coleman is the deep man. Browns with a 7 nothing lead on the Oilers. And now Coleman with a fair catch back at the 20-yard line. It's a 38-yard punt by Hansen. I said it was a legal hit, and it really was. Watch Langhorn 88 on the right of your screen coming in, and Bubba McDonald on the left of your screen. Now watch what happens. You want to see his head snap? Look at this. Here's the hit in the rib cage. Langhorn did walk off the field. That is a super hit. And it was Bubba McDowell who made the hit also a clean one on Danny Peoples of the Cleveland Browns in the earlier meeting last month. Peoples, the wide receiver return man, suffered a spinal injury recommended by doctors that he retire because he has a, a narrow spinal cord. And Danny has retired. He'll be joining an accounting firm in Raleigh, North Carolina. He was honored prior to the start of today's game. Here's Moon throwing one out. Beautifully done. Hayward Jeffries on the reception. His first of the day as he is hit down by Randy Hilliard and it's a 43-yard pass play for Moon. His first his first completion of the day. 
Randy Hilliard is there, but watch what watch what Jeffries does. Now he goes down, he knows he's not hit. He hits back up. Newsom comes in and makes the play. He heads up play by the safety because he might have had a touchdown. Hayward Jeffries with his 90th catch of the season. He leads the NFL. A first down of the Cleveland 35. Moon to the sideline and able to complete to Curtis Duncan. We're set for an update. Let's go to our New York studios. Here's Bob. All right, Mark, Bubby Brister is back as the starting quarterback in place of Neil O'Donnell for the Steelers. Here he rolls right. He hits Adrian Cooper. Bad tackling by the Bengals, and Cooper is going to go 47 yards for the touchdown. Moments later, a 47-yard field goal by Gary Anderson. Steelers 10, Bengals zip. All right, Bob, and back in Cleveland, a second down and four for the Oilers at the 29. The snow is falling. It was supposed to snow, but later on in the day, here's Pinkett, and he's short of the first down. We just saw the play before this. They threw the ball on the outside to Curtis Duncan. Reason for it, we talked about it. Frank Minifield is the guy that's going to be playing man-to-man -man on the outside. They have enough confidence in that young man, number 31, to play man-to-man. -man. On first down, Moon looked out there from the shotgun position and saw Curtis Duncan on Minifield. Minifield's backing off, and he's giving him like six or seven yards. When that happens, Moon's going to go out there. Now, Minifield is out again on Duncan. You can see him in that picture right there. He's off about six yards. Third down and one. Pinkett to the outside. Tripped up but has the first down. Alan Pinkett was telling us last night that every time he runs for 100 yards, takes all the offensive linemen out for dinner, usually at a Houston steakhouse. We asked him, what is the bill run? He said, what, around $1,100? But the offensive linemen uh, leave a tip, which is very, <laughs> yeah. very considerate. Said last week, though, Paul, when he ran for 98 yards, he hurt his hip, so he did not go back in to attempt to go over 100. His pals, the offensive lineman, felt he was faking to avoid <laughs> the dinner tag, but he said he'd spring for it anyway as, as a bonus to the guys. It's a first down at the 23, and another completion, this time to Drew Hill. So Lauren Moon distributing the ball. Eric Turner, the strong safety, made the stop. And the one thing Cleveland knows about Moon, all right, the first two series, remember we looked at it, it was a minus one yardage, 62 to a minus one. Once Moon gets his confidence and he gets hot and he starts finding people open and he has time to throw the ball, look out because he can burn you. He'll burn you short. We saw the long pass to Jeffries. That was a 43-yard play. Now he's taking two yards, six-yard plays. And he'll have to go back out to Duncan again because, again, that's the only man that's played man-to-man -man by Minifield. And Moon came back strong last week after the two poor games. Losses by the Oilers. Penalty markers down. Jeffries was down and was able to make the catch. Randy Hilliard on the coverage. Won't count. The illegal motion by the Oilers. Uh, and I think it, it was uh, on Ernest Givens. But somebody moved in there. But, you know, what a great catch by Jeffries. He's on the ground, he makes the catch. He's trying to get to that 100 in a hurry. This guy, I see him in the lobby or something last night. Illegal motion foul. Offense, two men moving at the same time. Five yard penalty, second down. Well, let's not have two men moving at the same time. But Jeffries, that, you know, always has a smile on his face. He's having a great time. Now we see two men moving. Right at the line of scrimmage, there's a whole bunch of people moving including the offensive line. Now, you saw Hayward Jeffries in the lobby. Were you looking yeah. to a... a no, he just smiles, all, here? No, oh, he just smiles all the time. Every time oh. you see the guy, he's got a smile on his face, and he oh. knows the kind of elite company he's going to be in if he gets to 100 catches. Final seconds of the first quarter, and time has run out. Well, you're not allowed in the lobby. That's why <laughs> I have to go down to the lobby. <laughs> After one, it's the Brown seven, and the Oilers nothing. McDowell, and the word is he got the wind knocked out of him, which uh, we would suspect, but uh, sore ribs, and he hopes to be able to return. Well, the way he's walking and, and standing down there and the doctor's looking at him, I don't think we're going to see him back in this ballgame too soon. Second quarter underway, second down and 12, the ball up to Cleveland, 25. 
The Browns with a 7 nothing lead. Houston putting a move on in terms of total yards. Cleveland dominated most of the first quarter. Pick it off the ground with nowhere to go. And he's hit for a loss. Well, one of the reasons this play doesn't work is because they had a blitz on with Stephen Braggs, number 36, who is the nickel back. And he happened to be at the line of scrimmage making the tackle. So when you when you read a blitz, it's nice if you run a draw and you get to the hole in a hurry, but you can't be dancing around. Once you do that, there's too many people. Here it comes. Now watch. Once Pinkett starts dancing, here comes Bragg, 36. He makes the tackle. Certainly a question as we head to the playoffs concerning the Houston running game. Pinkett, to this point, five rushes, eight yards. It's a third and about 12. Moon in trouble. Moon on the run. And we'll have to see where they mark it. Took the hit at the 15-yard line. The free safety, Vince Newman, made the stop. Vince Newman coming off a very tough day. Newsom, I should say, comes off a very tough day against Denver last week. Once Moon gets to the outside, I mean, he's doesn't have a whole lot of speed. Of course, he's been around a while, too. But Moon steps up and looks. No one to throw the ball to. The rush is on. Then Moon gets back to the outside. Vince Newsom saves the first down here. It's fourth down, and, and the owners are going to go for it. The problem is, do you run for it? Because, but they're short passing offenses like, you know, like run play. They pass up a 31-yard field goal. They go to pick it. And he picks up the first down. He's inside the 10. Newsom on the tackle. Now, see the difference in that running play. The other one was a draw when Pickett started dancing. This play here is right off left tackle. And what, what happens is Pickett, he goes right to the hole right now. He is there making the play. Munchak and Mags are over there on that side. He makes the move to the hole immediately instead of dancing around in the backfield, giving the defense time to get there. The Oilers first and goal at the seven. This is the ninth play of the drive. Jeffries now splits wide to the left. And Duncan is to the right. Hill to the slot left. Moon looking end zone. And it's a touchdown. Ernest Gibbon with his fourth touchdown of the season. Ernest Gibbons coming underneath. Everybody else went to the end zone. And when you play zone defense, now, when you get down on the goal line, it's almost like in blitz situations, and, I, and, and you should be playing man-to-man -man down in that area. Gibbons that time came underneath, across the field. When he threw the ball, there was just nobody there. So Jack Pardee passing up what would have been a 31-yard field goal attempt, went for the first down, picked it up, and then able to score. Here's Al Del Greco, and to replace Ian Howfield, signed right after that. Houston loss at the hands of the Redskins at RFK. Penalty markers down. Offside, Ooh, number 42 on the kick. defense lined up in the neutral zone. The point is good. Five-yard penalty on the kickoff. Timeout. So we're tied at seven. We'll be back in Cleveland in a moment. Go Warren Moon through his 21st touchdown of the season and the browns and the oilers now tied at seven nine plays 79 yards over six minutes and 23 seconds here's the return by joe morris oh excellent coverage by houston all right marv now we're going to see ernest givens and what happens so here he is here watch this linebacker here has a shot this man this man this man and this man are all back into the end zone area here Gibbons just comes across and he's wide open. Here we go. Everybody retreats to the end zone. Gibbons is there and there's just nobody to make the play on him. Browns now start out from the 20 yard line. Bernie Kozar has opened up six for eight, 41 yards, and a touchdown completing to Leroy Hoare. Two and a half gone by in the second. And it's Kevin Mack stopped by the right defensive end, Sean Jones, a short pickup for Mack. 
And we are set for an update. Let's go to Bob Costas. More of a tough stint as the starting quarterback for the Seahawks for Kelly Stoffer. First, he was intercepted by Deion Sanders. Then he sacked in the end zone. Brian Jordan gets credit for it. He was really whacked. He sprains his knee on the play. The safety gives Atlanta a 2-0 lead, and Norm Johnson just kicked a field goal, so make it 5-zip Falcons. All right, Bob, and Atlanta can win the NFC West with a victory. Penalty marker is down. Kevin Mack on the completion, run down by Lamar. Lathan getting back to that Atlanta-Seattle situation. Atlanta with a win can take the NFC West with a victory plus a New Orleans Saints loss tomorrow night. Well, they're going to get Tony Jones, number 66, for Holy. <laughs> you talk about a takedown. It was beautiful. If they happen to be in a ring, to the right of the screen is 66. Now, he's on Sean Jones. See the takedown? Look at this. Bada boom. I mean, there were not only one, but two flags. Great catch by Mack, but for not. Here it is. Here comes it. There's, there's a shot there. And the way you see the flags are flying, and Bernie's saying, what's going on, boing? <laughs> Bernie said it in the pocket. Give him a lot of credit. Bernie Kozar taking a pretty good shot and also lost a 21-yard gain on the penalty instead of a second and 17 back at the 13. Nice catch, but short of the first down. Webster Slaughter able to extend in front of Chris Dishman. Webster Slaughter, one of the most exciting and toughest receivers in the game has uh, what is labeled deceptive speed in his sixth year out of San Diego State. Well, that, and that is getting open too. Webster Slaughter reading the defense, looking at the zone and just getting open and Bernie getting the ball to him. Third down and four from the 26. And Kozar running out of the pocket and completing for the first down to Brian Brennan. Bernie Kozar. I mean, he is all over the place. Watch Brian Brennan. Now, he sees Kozar in trouble, slides to the outside, gets by the defensive back, and moves the outside. That's Daryl Lewis, number 29, and they pick up the first down. And the Browns in the no huddle, which Bill Belichick has implemented uh, this season. They'll do it from time to time, and they've done well with it. It's a first down at midfield. Game is tied at seven. Those are able to complete for the tight end, Scott Galbraith, his third catch of the day. Marcus Robertson made the stop. One of the reasons that Bernie Kozar is having so much success is the offensive line are doing a great job. First of all, they are double-teaming children, number 79. And then the rest of the offensive line are playing one-on-one, -on -one and they're blocking very well, one-on-one. -on -one. Second down and five. Goes on, 9 for 11, back to the ground, pulled, running well, and has the first down. Sean Jones with the reps on Leroy Hoare. Bernie Kozar was telling us yesterday when these two clubs met last month, you mentioned the double team of Childress, Ray Childress, he said, completely controlled the line of scrimmage. He said, we're so aware of where he is. The thing about it is, when you have two guys blocking him all the time, Marv, somebody else has to be open. Ray Childress, the AFC Defensive Player of the Week, off his exploits last Sunday. And it's Mack. Another Cleveland. First down, Al Smith made the stop. Well, Mr. Childress <laughs> was in an awful lot of trouble. 79, watch this. He's over on, on the left-hand side, and he's being blocked one-on-one. -on -one. Kevin Mack catches the ball and picks up the first down. But now let's just take a look at it. Here's King out there on Childress. He's blocking him one-on-one. -on -one. Childress gets through. Then watch Babb come in. He comes in, and then Childress goes back at Babb. It's a tough day out there. Brown's first down of the Houston 24. Perfectly to Galbraith. He's been the primary receiver here in the first half. Lathan made the stop. 
Bernie Kozar just puts this ball right where it has to be to be caught. The double team again on Childers. But look at where this pass is. It is absolutely perfect. We've got a defensive player hurt sitting down about the 30-yard line. And that's Smith. Doug Smith, number 99, the Houston Oilers. Doug Smith, the man has been bothered by a nagging injuries right throughout the season. National Football League is brought to you by Chevrolet, the heartbeat of America, the cars more people depend on. By cold filtered Keystone and Keystone Light, bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? By Bugle Boy Company, because any closet without Bugle Boy is an empty closet. And by the car, the American Express car. Don't leave home without it. Way little with a second down and one inside the 15. Flag is down. Incomplete pass on the eighth play of the drive. Bubba McDowell covering the tight end Scott Galbraith. Offside Houston. Now something's going to happen. Childress is going to whack somebody. He took a shot at Babb because they're double teaming him, and that's frustrating enough. Offside. Number 97. Right. Here we go Five again. There's two. King. One on one on Childress. Second but he down. takes it down. And look at his arms are wrapped in. First He's down. holding. And Childress has got him by the face mask. I mean, it's, it's just total frustration. And like King saying, what have I done? I haven't done anything. I'm just holding you. <laughs> and it was Ed King, the rookie from Auburn, a second round draft pick who had such a tough day against Ray Childress back on the 17th of November. It is a first down from the 10. Houston and Cleveland are tied at seven. Seven and a half to go. First pass. Mack. Kevin Mack hit down by William Fuller. And let's check out the Dr. Pepper 10-minute ticker. Still 5 nothing. Dallas over oh. Philly. Atlanta with a 5 nothing lead. Still a couple of safeties this afternoon. Detroit and Green Bay tied at 7. If the Lions win, they clinch a wild card. Jets and New England even at 3. Louis Aguiar hitting from 23 yards away. Pat Leahy bottled by a bruised hit. It's a second. Second and goal at the 8. Aguiar does it all. Kozar to the end zone. Intended for Webster Slaughter. Bo Orlando, number 26, was there. Now, whether he got a piece of it or not, I don't know. But here comes Slaughter. They're going to release him to the inside. You see, when they release like that, you're looking at zone. You see Bo Orlando right there? He really doesn't get a piece of the ball, I don't think. Because Slaughter is just upset with himself for not catching the football. Third down. It's a third and goal at the eighth. Goes on with the time. Touchdown. Brian Brennan with his first touchdown of the season. Chris Dishman complaining to the official. Got a flag for it. I think he said something that's going to cost him. And that'll be on the kickoff because it's after the touchdown. But there is a flag on the field. Dishman said something to the official on sportsmanlike conduct. There it is. There it is. Sportsman like conduct call for taunting, throwing the ball at an opponent. 15 yards will be assessed on the kickoff. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, but who? Is it on Brennan? He threw the ball in his face, but he didn't throw it at the opponent. Chris Dishman was complaining. At the end of the play, Brian Brennan busted the ball, but he busted it in the playing field, not in the end zone. Well, Dishman and Brennan have been chatting it up right yeah, but, throughout. But did they say, did Mark Wright say who it was against? No, he did not, but uh, we are assuming it is against Brian Brennan. <laughs> and Matt Stover extends to a 14-7 Cleveland lead with 6.52 to go in the second. Number 86 catches the touchdown pass. Chris Dishman, 28, is on a tackle. Here it is. It's at the end of the play. Brian Brennan gets up. Dishman goes back. They're pushing and shoving. They're talking. Watch Brennan. He comes up, and he busts the ball at Dishman on the playing field. And that's where they call the sportsman-like conduct. 
And now they're kicking the ball off from the 20 yard line. Pinkett and Coleman are the deep men. And Matt Stover will kick it from the 20 yard line. The Browns with a 14 7 lead on the Oilers. It's picked up by Pinkett. Alan Pinkett getting across the 40-yard line. A reminder, next Saturday, a special afternoon of NFL here on NBC starting at 12 noon Eastern time with NFL Live. It'll be the Houston Oilers against the Giants from Giants Stadium. We'll be there to bring it to you. And uh, for the Oilers, depending on what happens here today and depending on how Buffalo makes out this evening, they may still be vying for home field advantage throughout the playoffs and still gunning for second seed. Warren Moon is four for seven to this point. And he puts it up, goes sideline, has a first down, completing with Awa Jeffries, covered by Alfred Jackson. Now, the Cleveland Browns on defense are going with six defensive backs. When you said Alfred Jackson, he's the sixth. Fifth is Stephen Bragg's 36th. And they're faking blitzes with Eric Turner. And don't be surprised to see him go. And as much respect on the other side of the ball for Eric Turner. So Belichick is just a sweater. Oh, he's tough. It is a first down of the 45. Marv Albert, Paul McGuire from Cleveland. The Browns with a 14-7 lead. And Moon again with the sideline. Cut down and is almost picked off. On a ricochet, Jackson with a shot at it. Jeffries, the intended receiver. You know, you got Jeffries going out. Now watch this. There's Bragg's 36 is out there, along with number 41, Jackson. The ball goes off of Jeffries, and Jackson almost makes the play. Double coverage on the outside. Moon's got to come back to the right-hand side because, again, you're looking, even if they have six defensive backs out there like they do now, you still have Minifield one-on-one on Curtis Duncan. Alfred Jackson, third year from San Diego State, signed as a free agent after he was waived by the Los Angeles Rams. Second and ten at the 45. Pinkett gets to the outside. Reaching inside the 40-yard line, and Eric Turner made the stop. Cleveland Browns still with slim hopes to make the playoffs. They must win their last two games here today and then against Pittsburgh next week. Miami must lose its last two against San Diego and the Jets. The Jets have to lose to New England and then beat the Dolphins next week. And then, Paul, Seattle must win its last two against Atlanta and the Rams. They were all four teams finished at 8-8, and, and the Browns would do it by virtue of a tiebreaker. That's as clear as mud. Oh, yes. I love that. Yeah. Thank you very much. You did it without any graphics, which I thought was terrific. It is possible <laughs> for the Browns, but no matter what, it's been a terrific turnaround season for this club. A completion to Drew Hill. And it's a Houston first down. He was covered by the right corner, Randy Hilliard. Drew Hill, I mean, the man just amazes everyone, and Moon just shakes his head when you talk to him about it. Here comes Hilliard on Hill, but it is first down. And I believe, again, you know, you're, you're in a situation here with the Houston Oilers. This is not field goal area. This is four down situation. They went for it on the last drive because they've already, they're already in a playoff. And the, the, the only chance they have for home field advantage throughout is if Buffalo loses the last two, they must win. So, you know, just playing for kind of ties don't, don't help them. And it's the first down at the 28. And Moon goes the middle. Pickett out of the backfield, and he has a first down. The middle linebacker, Richard Brown, Richard Brown. and Clay Matthews combining to make the stop. The swing around the uh, Dr. Pepper 10-minute ticker. The Eagles now with a 7-5 lead. Philadelphia trying to make it seven straight wins. Jeff Kemp throwing a 31-yard touchdown pass. Atlanta 5-zip. Detroit and Green Bay are tied at seven. Jets in New England. Three apiece, Minnesota with a 7-0 lead in. Pittsburgh 10-7 in the second. When you were doing all that uh, Cleveland yes. Jet thing, you didn't throw Philadelphia in there anywhere, did you? No. We're not going to <laughs> we're not going to do that one for a while, are we? Because that you know, give them a chance to absorb all that other stuff. All right, Paul. I know we need a little, little, little quick for you. One I know. who's been 
I understood the eight and eight. What has been hanging around the lobby for two days, <laughs> looking for people to talk to, looking and hoping people will recognize you. It's amazing, it's they very don't. Sad. Everybody says to me, "Hey Al, how you doing?" <laughs> Answer. Well, the ball spotted just shy of the first down. It's, it's a second and one at the 19. And Moon has a first down combining with Drew Hill. And that is his third catch of the day. Had eight last week, caught eight balls in the victory over Pittsburgh. Hill run out by Matthews and a first, a first and goal down at the seven. He's two yards away from a thousand. He needs 26. And you know, at that time, Clay Matthews, that's not that's not the man that's covering him man to man. He's in that zone. But when you give Warren Moon that much time, he's gonna find the single covered guy. And that time, the last two times he's thrown the ball to Drew Hill, he's been covered one on one. Houston trailing by the score, 14-7, three and a half remaining in the first half. Pinkett trying to step on his way, but he's hit. For a loss, Clay Matthews, who has a little bit more going today, aside from uh, looking for the victory for the Browns, he also is looking across at his brother, the Houston starting center, Bruce Matthews. Well, at that time, his brother wasn't blocking on him. Doug Dawson was trying to block him, couldn't get to him. Clay Matthews makes the play for a loss of two yards. He is and was at that point in time. There were two linebackers in. Now they're going back to six defensive backs, and there's his brother, Bruce. Clay telling us he feels that his dad is actually rooting for the orders because there's more at stake, more of a shot to do good things this year. Kind of depressed as he was telling us that. Day. And Moon throwing. Good effort, but Duncan could not hang on in a race with Middlefield. I saw I saw this touchdown pass thrown on Monday night with Marino to Clayton. Watch this one. He doesn't catch it, Duncan. But look at where this ball is put. Minifield has no chance at the ball. Duncan just drops the football. It was a hard catch to make. Not too many people can make it. But what a perfect pass. Now you're looking third down. I would imagine here, though, that, you know, if, if they don't get it within the two or three yard line, they're going to kick a field goal. I say the four down situation, but you got to have three to win it anyway. to try to get a timeout. Moon throwing. And let's see what the call is here. Well, they're going to call that, that, that as that given, he's out of bounds, and he cannot come back in. He caught the ball out of bounds, and even if he, if he catches the ball inbounds, once you go out of the playing field, you cannot come back in. He had he lost his balance. That along the lines of Haywood Jeffries Earlier in the game, he was down when he caught the ball, but he was out of bounds, and then, as you say, he came back. If that's the case. The eligible receiver go out of bounds and come in and touch the pass before anyone else has touched the ball. It's a foul for illegal touching. The penalty is lost All right, down. On the outside, early. take it's a look at here. Here's Gibbons, and you're right. He slips, and he goes out of bounds. He is in perfect position for the touchdown, but he just slips, his legs go out. Here it is, right here, his leg is out of bounds. Well, this is afterwards. He had already been out of bounds, and then he came back in. And once you do that, now if the ball was tipped, he can come back in and catch it. But it wasn't. So a 27-yard field goal attempt for Al Del Greco. Seven for 10 on the season after taking over for Ian Howfield. Last week hit one of two. Missed from 35 and hit from 24. Al Del Greco, one-time Packer, one-time Cardinal in his eighth season out of Auburn. The completed pass was nullified by the penalty. On the field, it is being reviewed by instant replay. Well, take a look at it, and, and when you see on the left of your screen, now watch his right foot. You see his right foot? is out of bounds here comes the ball he's out of bounds he comes back in he is in bounds when he catches the play stands it. that's right it's fourth down good call the replay official dave kamansky so with a fourth and goal at the 10-yard line it's a 27-yard attempt 
by Del Greco. The pump is Rick Montgomery, put it down, and Del Greco's kick is right through. 2.26 remaining in the second. Cleveland leads by four. Flurries uh, continue to fall here at Cleveland Stadium. 2.26 remaining in the second quarter, and the Browns leading the Oilers by the score of 14-10. Lynn James, Joe Morris awaiting the kickoff from Al Del Greco. And it's handled by Morris. Oh, he is shoved down as he reached out to the 20-yard line. Eugene Seal, a, an excellent special teams player, made the stop. Coming up at halftime, the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Edition. Bob Costas, Will McDonough, O.J. Simpson. And uh, they'll take a close-up look at the Miami Dolphins turnaround, along with all the scores and, and highlights. We will run down the, uh, the playoff implications. We didn't get our Domino's Pizza this week. Speak to yourself, Paul. Uh, okay. It is a first down at the 20-yard line. And Kevin Mack picks up a couple, but our flag has been thrown. Lamar Lathan on the stop. A reminder at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be presenting the Avis We Try Harder Award, which will be given to the game's MVP. We'll start number 69, offense, prior to the snap, five right, yards is, penalty, first down. That's the right tackle, Dan Pike, in his seventh season, out of Florida. Top of your screen, or to the left, you see Fike move, and as soon as he moves, William Fuller takes off, too, so. Fike and Jones at the tackles, King and Reedstrom at the guard. The center is bad, and the Browns with a first and 15 back at the 15. We approach two minutes remaining in the first half. Back accelerates, and the crowd reacts to the play call. See, if I were Houston, I want to get the ball back. I'd take a timeout here because you, st you still have the two-minute and they have three timeouts. Make him run another play. And now, two minutes to go. In the first half, the Browns 14 and the Oilers 10. Please call your ball. Belichick, he told us yesterday he was not happy about last week's practice sessions. Didn't feel good going into the Denver game, although... We've certainly seen teams that have had a poor week of practice and then go out and, and play well, but Belichick said he had a feeling, a bad one, about last week. Here's Ford on the swing, breaking tackle. Oh, he is so tough to bring down. He's just short of a first down. Robertson and Orlando finally able to knock him down. We've got somebody hurt uh, on the outside. And I can't get the number. He's just getting up. He's a mad at mate. Missed the tackle that Horde ran through. And that's Lamar Lathan. And we're talking about the poor tackling of the secondary. Now you're talking about a linebacker. And Leroy Horde runs right through Lamar Lathan. Kozar wants to get the ball to the outside. Now watch this. Here's 57 Lathan coming out. Bang. He just runs right through him. And I, when he fell, I think he hurt his arm. That's one of those things where you can hyper extend your elbow just to miss the tackle. <laughs> did you hear that, did you hear that uh, announcement we had in-house here? Public little? address system running down uh, various requests. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you enjoyed that last yeah, one. Yeah, Mr. Huh? Chasey, would you please call your mother-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the chances of that are? All right, looks like Lathan is all right. The Browns in a third down and one. Kozar 13 for 16. They didn't get Ford it. is stopped. He lost yardage. Sean Jones with the tackle of Leroy Hoare. And Houston, they're going to take a timeout here, and they should. They have three of them. They took the timeout. Minute 21 to go in this first half. We'll be back in a moment. Timeout. As the Browns get set to punt, Brian Hansen is back at his 15, and at 21, remaining in his first half. And now the Browns make a shift, confusion by, by the Oilers as they look to react to it. Browns giving the idea they might go for it. I don't know, fourth down and one back at their at 29. All kinds of confusion. 
because the entire Houston squad is on the field. Houston's trying to call a timeout. But the one thing you cannot do is call two consecutive timeouts. And it was uh, Brian Brennan, the quarterback, on the play handing to Lee Roussan. And let's see where they spot it. You got the uh, 26 guys on the field. <laughs> they had too many. They had a whole bunch of people. Well, that, that was the idea as the flag was a constitution foul. Four run right on the field for the defense. Well, five well, yard penalty. First down. Well, it certainly worked as Brian Brennan took over the quarterbacking duties and handed to Lee Roussan. Well, you've got to penalize them two on top of it, but there were more than than uh, 12 guys on the field. I mean, we, I was trying. I was trying to call. Well, let me. Well, let's see. There's a lot more than 12 uh, on the field. There's more like 14 because they also had two guys deep. Bill Belichick attempting to create confusion, and he did. That was a terrific move by the Browns. And they pick up the first down at the 34. And an 18 remaining in this first half, so the Browns, instead of giving the ball up, able to maintain possession. And they still have three timeouts. Swings it out to Hoard. Run out by Darrell Lewis. So that stops the clock. Jim Eddy said something that was very interesting about Leroy Hoard yesterday, the defensive coordinator for Houston. He said, now, here's the guy when he catches the ball, he's dangerous. He said he is not a great receiver. The Kozar said, we like to get him in that gray area. Get him outside and let him start to run. We saw what happened on Lathan. He ran through him and almost picked up the first time, first down moments ago. And this is what Kozar likes to do is get him the ball one-on-one -on -one downfield. Now he's going deep. And firing deep down the sideline. Talk it up. Oh, what a play by Chris Dishman to get a piece of that pass intended for Webster Slaughter. And he knocked it in the hands of Bo Orlando, who intercepted the ball. It was beautiful. Dishman knocks the ball back. Bo Orlando is running. Watch this. Here's the hit back into Bo Orlando's hand. Does he have control before he goes out of bounds? One step, two steps. He has control. It is an interception. What a great play. Look at Dishman. Dishman just plays it perfectly and bats the ball back into the playing field right into Bo Orlando's hands. They'll review it, maybe. But it won't make any difference. Orlando with his fourth interception of the season, but it was Dishman with the terrific coverage, getting a piece of it, keeping it away from Webster Slaughter, who had the step. And Houston takes over at a 12-yard line with a minute six remaining in his first half. And then able to complete to Pinkett, who runs it out of bounds. That, incidentally, the first turnover of the day for either club. And Alan Pink at that time just coming out of the backfield. Remember now, the Houston Oilers still have two timeouts after all that junk that went on a little while ago. They still have two timeouts. They still have 59 seconds. And with this offense, they can get in field goal range. Browns with a 14-10 lead. Kozar to Leroy Hoard. Eight-yard touchdown pass. Moon tied it. Connecting with Ernest Gibbons on a seven-yard pass play. Kozar again. Eight yards to Brian Brennan. 27-yard field goal by Del Greco. And Moon able to get it to Pinkett, but he fell down in, in making the catch. He fell down at the 26-yard line. Houston taking a taking a timeout. Clock is stopped with 45 seconds remaining in the first half. So when we resume, it'll be a second down and seven. A look at the Dr. Pepper 10-minute ticker. Still 7-5. Philadelphia with the lead. Atlanta now 12-0 at halftime. Green Bay by three over Detroit in the second quarter. Out in the elements. Yes. They're outdoors. <laughs> right. New England 
And the Jets tied at three at the half. Minnesota 10-0 on the Rams. And Pittsburgh 10-7 in the second, leading Cincinnati. It's the Browns 14 and the Oilers 10. And it's getting a little bit uh, more nippy here in Cleveland. Game time temperature at 29 degrees. We we did see some snow earlier. Looks like uh, that has stopped. And the wind has not been a factor to this point. No, and wind is actually very little. I think it's less than, than the 16 miles an hour that we had at the beginning of the game. What ha what's happening here with, with the Browns with six defensive backs, they are just laying deep. Actually, they are playing with seven defensive backs. And one linebacker, three down linemen. Warren Lewis, 10 for 16, 115 yards, has a second and seven. And has the first down with Pinkett out of the 35-yard line. The problem is, with, with this, the way the, the, the Browns have their defense, with seven defensive backs and one linebacker, that gives you eight people in coverage, three rushing, is that the shortstop is open, that's fine, but you're not going to get yourself in field goal range able to complete but he could not get out of bounds Drew Hill making his fourth catch of the day stopped by Alfred Jackson and the last timeout has been taken by Houston so the clock is stopped with 13 seconds remaining in the half it'll be a first down at the 47 in Houston territory all right trivia question what yardage marker did Drew Hill just go over what yardage marker? Yeah. Total oh, yards. Oh, I see. How many? Try to explain yourself. I'm trying to get it out. Well, you, you mentioned it in passing earlier. I was what? listening. What? What is it? What is it? What is the answer? Right, here it is. Ooh. I knew I was good. All right. Fourth consecutive season with 1,000 plus yards receiving for Drew Hill. And uh, Drew Hill now becomes only the fourth receiver in NFL history. 1,000 yard seasons after turning 30 years of age. What a great stat that was. It's a first down at the 47. And Moon able to complete the pick and he tried to get out of bounds, could not. They're not going to get a playoff either. That's the half. So time has run out. And the crowd responds to the home club. The Browns for the 14-10 lead on Houston at halftime in Cleveland. NFL Live will be coming up right after these messages and a word from our local station. And here's the kickoff, Pat Coleman on the return. So this third quarter is underway. Kozar able to connect with Brian Brennan for the other touchdown. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler bring you this NFL game of the month. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. Houston starting out from its 30-yard line as this third quarter gets started. Houston Oilers have 10 up and 4 down. They have not won 11 games in a season since back in 1980 when they won 11 and 5. And Moon throwing on first down. He goes incomplete intended for Haywood Jeffrey. A look at the Keystone halftime statistics. Both clubs passing on the running game they have not done much on the ground and uh, we see even statistics for the most part in this first half and a very close game 14 10 you know and houston was down there to go for a touchdown had a penalty set him back but you know this really is an even game offensively again when you look at the stats it's, well the defense is really strong but there's been some great spurts from the offense but not continuous 
Lorenzo White now in the backfield, replacing Alan Pinkett. And it's a short pick on Hill. He made the catch. Richard Brown, the middle linebacker, on the stop. If you look down the middle of the field, Marv, it's, it's kind of chewed up in there. And, and when you see the guys, uh, Lorenzo White that time coming out of the backfield slip. Uh, Hill just caught the ball, tried to turn and slip. The foot is not great in the middle. I think it's a little bit better on the outside. It is a third and five at the 35. Dogs are barking. Some activity in the dog pound. Moon's pass. Incomplete. Gibbons complaining, though, that he was interfered with. Very unhappy with the coverage by Stephen Braggs and has to be restrained by teammates. Well, I don't know if he'd been able to catch that ball anyway. Braggs is on him. Gibbons is going to the outside. He puts a move. There's 36 of Braggs. Gibbons is going to the outside. I don't see anything. They got their feet tangled up, but that was incidental contact. Or accidental. Punt of the day for Greg Montgomery from his 22. Oh, he hit this one. Webster Slaughter has to go back for it. Muffs it and recovers. And the good coverage by the Oilers. Crowd reacts. To, they feel that should be a hit out of bounds penalty on seal, but nothing is thrown at the 51-yard punt by Montgomery. at the Hertz 10-minute ticker. Philadelphia with a 10-5 lead now on Dallas. The winner here can clinch a wild card with a win next week. Atlanta 12-0 in the third. Atlanta can win the division with a win and a Saints loss tomorrow night. Green Bay 10-7 over Detroit. Lion win and they clinch the wild card. New England in front of the Jets now 6-3 in the third. If the Jets win, Cleveland and Seattle would be eliminated. First down for the 15 yard line. Nice hole for Kevin Mack. Lamar Lathan on the tackle. If the Jets lose today to New England and they are trailing, they they can be eliminated if Miami wins later today. All right, let's see Mack, and this is just trap blocking right in the middle of the line of scrimmage. Tony Jones is the left tackle that gets a great trap lock coming down the line of scrimmage, and it opened the hole, first down. It is a first down at the 26-yard line. Early moments of the third quarter. Another good hole for Mack. Al Smith on the stop. And Marvin, what they're, what they're doing is, is the Cleveland Browns, actually, they're just just quick opening holes. I mean, they're not they're not trying to go wide. They're just coming straight up. Watch this, Mac. Bab 61 is the center. They get a double team block. They go right up the middle. It picked up almost eight yards on the play. It is being called a second down and three at the 33 of the earlier game against Houston. And this month, Kevin Mack ran for only 32 yards on 16 carries, so he was held in check. And they go right back to Mack. This time, he is hit down by Al Smith. William Fuller made a great play. He just submarined the block and comes up underneath. Number 95, the bottom of the screen. Watch this. Here comes the, the trap on the outside. He goes underneath the trap, makes the play, gets help from Al Smith, but a super play by Fuller. And Smith keeping Mack short of the first down. It is a third down. And one. Now Slaughter splits wide to the right. That is the lone defense. Three minutes in to the third quarter. And the Browns with a 14-10 lead on the Oilers. Mack surging for the first down. It's going to be, if he makes this, it's by the nose of the ball. The question is, do you go for it? The Browns, are, they've got a four-point lead right now, but I don't know that he made it. They're going to have to measure this. According 
Brandon Walker on the other side of the field. Yeah, they did make it, but that one doesn't count. That could be anywhere. It's the one on this side where the chain is. Yes, they did. As you say, by, by the nose of the ball. Just a great charge by the defensive line, and Mack goes right up the middle. Look at this. I think he got a bad mark on top of it. I mean, it looked, it looked like he had it by at least a yard, but when they marked the ball, they moved it back. Cleveland first down at their 36. Ozar trying to go to the middle, but Langhorn, who took that uh, shot earlier but has made his return, could not hang on. That ball looked like it was tipped at the line of scrimmage by Sean Jones, number 96. He's coming in, and when Kozar throws, there's Jones. No, it wasn't tipped by Jones. Langhorn's the man that tipped the ball, hit it up in the air, but it looked like it was tipped right early before he threw the ball. It'll be a second out of 10 for Bernie Kozar, the 36. Busy week for Bernie, his wife for Beth. They birth to their first child, a daughter, Sarah Wayne, at four pounds, seven ounces, born seven weeks premature. Mother and daughter, fine. I'm not sure about Bernie. <laughs> Bernie missed a lot of the action. And Kozar hit down. A sack for William Fuller. First sack of the day for Houston. And Fuller with his 13th of the season. He is among the NFL leaders of that department. Fuller just makes a move to the inside on Dan Fike and gets up and, and makes a play. It's good hustle. They also, for the first time, we saw Childress in the backfield. He's been pretty much stopped at the line of scrimmage. The Fuller rush man enjoying the best season of his career. Fuller rush man, That's courtesy of Houston Junior publicity director. And Kozar taken down again by William Fuller. Well, that heat was put on that time by Childress. Fuller gets credit for the sack, but the sack is made by his teammate. Now, Fuller's going to come to the inside. Childress, he is triple teamed up in the middle. Watch this. Childress forces Kozar right in to Fuller. That's teamwork. That's team defense. Now, last week, Houston had seven sacks against Pittsburgh, the most for the Oilers since an eighth sack affair back in 85. They are second in the AFC, now with 42 sacks for the season. The puck by Hanson, and it hit a Brown. Yeah, that ball will come all the way back because it did hit one of the Cleveland Browns about the 42 or 43 yard line, and they'll bring the ball back. You can't knock it forward. It hit Odie Harris. And the ball's being placed at the 44. We'll be back in a moment. And then Miller Genuine Draft Light, taking the country by storm. By the new Mazda, Mazda, it just feels right. By Norelco patented lift and cut shapers, we make clothes comfortable. And by Mylanta, the antacids doctors recommend most. Here you see Coleman coming up. He just moves out of the way, and Odie Harris is right there, and the ball hits him right on the shoulder at the 42-yard line. Excellent mark by the official. That's where Cleveland gets the ball. Once it's knocked down the field, once it's cut. Now, see, a Houston guy could go back, pick up the ball, run with it, fumble the ball, but they can never lose possession of it. Five minutes have gone by in the third. Cleveland 14 and Houston 10. And here's Lorenzo White touching the ball for the first time. Gets inside the 45-yard line. Clay Matthews made the stop. Lorenzo White, a slashing style runner, likes to, likes to cut back. Alan Pinkett played the entire first half, not able to get much going. White, uh, more of a uh, pass receiving threat, although Moon did throw to to Pinkett in the first half. White ran for four. It's a second down and six the 46-yard line. 81 Gibbons comes across. Here's White. Clay Matthews right there. Well, I'd kind of work on my running game if I were ahead. 
but you don't have to be ahead here. And you still have the same situation on the right-hand side of the offense, left-hand side of the defense, where you have man-to-man -man coverage with Frank Minifield. And that's where I think I would work. And he is their best defensive back. There's no question about that. But on this kind of a field where the receiver knows where he's going at all times, the defensive man doesn't, I think he has the advantage. That is the offensive coordinator, Kevin Gilbride, looking at a third down and four at the 48. Boom complete for the first down. Looked like Duncan had it and then was pushed back. He was at the marker. Let's see where they spotted Frank Minifield on the coverage. Well, that's what I'm talking about. See, you, you look at on the top side of the screen. You see Duncan out there, number 80. Now look where Benefield. Now he comes into the picture. He's the only guy playing man-to-man -man coverage. Now, the reason that they put the ball up there is because Duncan had the first down. You can't drive him back. But you've got to work there. Now, if you get Benefield committing himself, coming up on the receiver, then release Duncan and let him go. Second catch of the day for Curtis Duncan. And it is a first down. The Cleveland 46. Here's White. And once again, the Browns all over him. Michael Dean Perry and Richard Brown on the stop and an exchange of words between the Oilers and the Browns. Quick swing around the Hertz 10 minute ticker. Philadelphia with a 10 5 lead. Atlanta extends 19-0 over Seattle in the third. New England maintaining a 6-3 lead. Minnesota 10-7 over the Rams. It's a second and nine at the 45. Seven minutes remaining in the third here in Cleveland. The Browns with a 14-10 lead off the draw. Lorenzo White running for the first down. James Jones, the left defensive tackles with the reps on White. Now, when you look at this play, this is a true draw play now. Watch Lorenzo White. Moon goes back in like in a pass mode there and then hands the ball to Lorenzo White. He picks up the first down on the play. It's a lot easier to run that play than it is to run a direct handoff. Reason? Houston, they do not have a tight end in the game. And in order to run wide, you must have a tight end. The Oilers do not have a tight end on the roster. As opposed to the Detroit, they're still the threat. They're running through philosophy. Moon in trouble. And it goes incomplete. The intended receiver was Drew Hill. Rob Burnett putting the pressure along with James Jones on Warren Moon. Watch Moon's face. Now what, when he peels out of here and he gets hit by Burnett right here. Watch, 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 watch him stop. Am I going down? Ah, uh, let me see. No, nah, let me get out. Okay, I'm back out. I'm free. Now I can get out and throw the ball. And he gets some help from his offensive lineman to come back to give him enough time to just throw the ball away. Second down and 10. At the 36. Got off to a, a slow start, first two series, but he's come on. Jeffries, and he's a good distance short of the first down. Penalty flag is thrown. Eric Turner came by and need Jeffries in the head. Now, I mean, whether it was intentional or not, I don't know. And Jeffrey throws the ball that's going to cost Jeffries in the Houston Oilers. That's dumb. Jeffries is on the ground when Turner goes by, but he's the guy that's going to get caught for throwing the ball. All right, at the end of the play, watch 29, Eric Turner. Okay? Jackson puts Jeffries down. Watch this. See that little, he just shaves him a little bit. Enough to upset him, and then Hayward Jeffries throws the ball at him. Now, what are they talking about? It's, it's got to be against Jeffries because he's the guy that gets caught. We have an unsportsmanlike conduct foul, throwing the football at an opponent. <laughs> it's a 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. It's a continuing action.
to the foul. It will be second down again. Yeah, but see, now did Turner catch it? Because if he catches it, may not be too bad. <laughs> here it comes here. Now see that he hits him in the head. He knees him in the head. Actually, as he goes by. Now watch this. See, it might have gotten away with it if Turner could have caught it. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Turner, though, a guy who can uh, agitate opponents, he's been a devastating hitter. He's caused four turnovers his last five games. The Oilers uh, felt uh, some of that in that meeting back uh, in Houston last month. Eric Turner set back by a stress fracture of the left leg. Finally got into it at midseason. He missed the first part of the year. Shouldn't this be third down, and I'll get to it in a second. Well, the habit of a second down and 20, and again, Moon in, in trouble, at living his way, and flags a throw as the pass intended for Duncan goes incomplete. The reason I'm saying that, because the penalty occurred on Hayward Jeffries after the play, and that was second down. So the penalty is after the play. They got a legal man downfield on top of this. This is getting ugly now. But when, when Jeffries, that was on second down, so they call it a continuous foul, I guess, and that's... But he was already down, that's what I couldn't understand. receiver downfield on the forward pass. Number 63, offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. Mike Monchuk. It is now a third down and 20 at the 46 and a half remaining in the third. Well, tight and, and, and we're right. It is a continuous action play because, yeah, but I thought once the guy was down, Jeffries, that the play was over. They say continuous action. That's okay. Here's Lorenzo White out of the backfield. He is way short on the first down. Stopped by Frank Metafield. So fourth down coming up, and Webster Slaughter will drop back, awaiting the punt from this man, Greg Montgomery. Greg Montgomery in his fourth year out of Michigan State. It's been a busy day for uh, Greg on the run-and-shoot offense. A punter usually not overworked uh, last season, punted only 34 times in 16 games. But he could have won the punting title last year, but didn't punt enough. Well, short, he averaged 45 yards. For punt, pops one to slaughter, lets it go, and it carries in, so they'll bring it out. They'll bring it out to the 20. We'll be right back. This ball comes back to the 20. Watch 42 Latinberry. Steve Jackson, he pushes him into the end zone. This is a great play by the defense. Look, look at this, and, and Jackson can't get back in to knock the ball in. Barry does a great job. Montgomery thought the ball should have been down about the one-yard line. Watch this. Now, nothing. Instead, they bring it out to the 20. So the Browns first down from the 20. And again, the snow flurries have returned. And Kozar cannot find the receiver. Down the way. And Mack, his submarine, Kevin Mack, get down by the strong safety, Bubba. McDowell. We're set for another update. Here's Bob Costas. All right, Marv, latest developments in Atlanta. Dave Craig in for the injured Kelly Stopper. He's one from out of the end zone, intercepted by Tim McHire. He spins and laterals it to Deion Sanders. Just after 3 o'clock on the East Coast, but in Atlanta, it's prime time. He brings it back 52 yards for the touchdown, and the Falcons widen their lead over the Seahawks to 19-0. All right, Bob, on second down. Kevin Mack has a first down. Lamar Lathan running him out of bounds. And that's, that's Childress is down. And Lamar Lathan is down. Ray Childress having another Pro Bowl season shaken up on the play. Hello? And yes, Paul, the snow has returned. It has a rib. Yes. <laughs> it's in our booth. Where's the other school, Paul? The Citadel. The Citadel. Da. The only school in the country starts with a Well, <laughs> oh, that's nice. And the 
penalty flash comes flying. It's a first and ten from the 32 for the Browns with 3.41 remaining. And the third of the Browns leading the Oilers by the score 14-10. On that last play, both Lathan and Childress were shaken up. Glenn Montgomery has come on replacing Ray Childress. There's Montgomery, 3 air man from Houston. Now he heads to the sideline. Jeff Alms comes on. The first win fall. Defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. You say Jeff Alm out of Notre Dame has now entered the lineup. It's a first down at the 37 for the Browns. Cleveland Browns still with a slim hope to qualify for a wild card playoff position, but they must win here today and then next week and get a lot of help. Here's Harris. Oh. running hard out. You want to know why they want to get him one-on-one? -on -one? Watch what he does to Darrell Lewis, number 29. Watch Ford take him on. Right here, bam! And knocks him into Al Smith. Ford goes out of bounds. He picked up the first down. But he just labeled Lewis. It is a first down at the 43. Now Michael Jackson good wide to the right side. Kozar has not looked his way. The swing handled by Horde again, he breaks the tackle. Finally taken out by Smith with help from Lewis. You better not try to tackle Leroy Horde up top. Now, he, when they throw the ball on the outside, here goes Kozar. He's got a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Is that? That's Lewis again. And he just runs right through him and picks up six or seven yards on the play. Leroy Horde, a player who has really come on strong and recent weeks. Last year had some fumbling problems. Ray Childress headed back to the locker room. Ford missed a good portion of training camp with a, a viral infection. Hort again, this time stopped by Smith and Fuller. Also had a knee injury that set him back. Ray Childress has had a very tough physical game. Well, he was bent over. Mike Babb kind of fell on him as he was going down and Childress is going to the locker room. Actually, he's heading towards the Cleveland locker room. Third down and four at midfield. Oh, the jumping, and here come the flags. Kozar. That was almost picked off. Lieutenant for Langhorn. Full start on number 19, offense. Quarterback, full start. Play. You know, and when you see Bernie look to the bench, Bernie Kozar look to the bench and not complain about it, he knows that he tried to draw him offside. He had Houston in a third and four, five-yard penalty gives him a first down automatically. But here's Kozar. Let's see what he does that's different. He's moving his head, he moves his shoulders, and that's what pulls off the defensive line. That's all. But they must be watching, and Houston is complaining about it, so now you're looking at a third down and nine situation. Again, that ball was almost picked off. Each club hit with five penalties. Those are 18 for 23, 155 yards. He's thrown two touchdowns, intercepted once, third down, and nine. And picks up the first down and some more. Now when you take a look at it, you're playing zone defense, and Langhorn, number 88, wants to see as, as they're playing zone, and actually the corner gets picked off, and that's Dishman gets picked off by the tight end, Scott Galbraith. When that happens, there's no place to go. First catch of the day for Langhorn. Cleveland first down at the Houston 39. Looking for interference on 
Darrell Lewis, the rookie from Arizona, who was covering Reggie Langhorn. But when you look at you, you, you just completed one to Langhorn. Now they're trying the same pattern one more time. Langhorn comes in. Actually, you could call offensive pass interference because you cannot push off the defensive back to make that turn. Second down and ten. Kevin Mack now the lone defense. Cleveland 14 and Houston 10. A minute 45 to go in the third. Mack on a slant pulls his way to the 35. Lamar Latham making the stop. Well, for the for the Houston Oilers, what is at stake here today? Houston guaranteed of a, a playoff berth by virtue of the AFC Central Division title, but still fine full position regarding home field advantage and first round buys. Home field advantage figures to be very difficult because not only do they have to win the remaining two, that's not the tough part of it, but Buffalo plays Indianapolis and Detroit, and they need Buffalo to lose to the Colts and the Lions, and then Houston would win the uh, tiebreaker based on better conference record. Third down, and five, goes on, incomplete. Pass thrown behind the tight end, Galbraith, covered by Lathan. Houston can be assured of the AFC's number two seed, which would mean a first-round playoff bye and hosting a second-round game by winning their final two, no matter what anyone else would do. And now it looks like Bill Belichick will go for it on a fourth down and five at the 34. Well, you really don't have a whole lot to lose. I mean, they've got to win, and, and here's the situation. If they can, a three only gives them a seven-point lead, and you're talking about a field goal of about 52 yards. Well, that's out of the question in this weather. So even if they turn it over here, Houston only gets the ball at the 35-yard line. The defense is playing well. Tenth play of the drive. Goes on, incomplete. No flag, Houston's ball. Intended for Galbraith, who took the hit from Robertson, and the Oilers take over with 51 seconds remaining in the third. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Just trying to get a little effect here. Marv Albert with Paul McGuire. And the Oilers take over on downs at their 35. They're trailing the Browns, 14 to 10. And Moon goes to work with Ernest Given. And a first down. Matthews and Newsom run about. Givens goes for 16. Let's take a look at the first 10-minute ticker. Philadelphia now 10-8 in front of Dallas in the third. A Seattle loss, and uh, their slim hopes are bye-bye in terms of a wild card spot. Green Bay 10-7 over Detroit in the third. New England on a couple of field goals by Charlie Bauman in front of the Jets. If the Jets lose and Miami wins later on today, the Jets are eliminated from a, a wild card opportunity. First down at midfield. This third quarter is coming to a close. Play action. And Moon able to complete. Drew Hill is short of the first down. That's his sixth catch of the day. He was stopped by Randy Hilliard, and that is it for the third quarter after three here in Cleveland. The Browns 14 and the Oilers 10 will be back after these words from your local station. 10 lead on Houston. Cleveland Browns have not had success in the fourth quarter and there have been a number of games. As you can see, they've been outscored 95-41 in the fourth quarter of the season, and they have also blown leads in at least four games, including the earlier meeting against Houston. But this is a club that has come a long way back under their rookie head coach, Bill Belichick. Houston, second down and three from the 42. And Moon's pass was deflected, broken up. Michael Dean Perry got up in the air and knocked that ball down. That gives you an idea. And Michael Dean is not the tallest man in the world at the nose tackle, but he got up in the air and knocked the ball down. It's an excellent play, and we're looking at four down territory for Houston. Watch Michael Dean. He goes back to the outside. He gets up and just knocks the ball down. Lorenzo White was open for the first down, and that's the most, that's the biggest concern of Houston right now. Get the first down. Don't worry about scoring right now. 
keeps this drive alive. A third and three. And for Cleveland, 42. Penalty marker down as Moon pass incomplete intended for Ernest Givens. Well, first of all, you have movement in the offensive line, so that play should be run all over again. Offense. Seventy-three is David Williams. He'll move. Watch this. There he is, right there on the end. He moves. That play is dead. Once the offensive lineman moves, the play's over with. So it's to be third and long. David Williams, first-round draft pick back in '89 out of the University of Florida. Williams and Mags at the tackles. Munchak and Dawson at the guards and the center is Matthews. It's a third down and eight. The 47. Eighty-five Hill in motion. And Moon able to complete for the first down to Hayward Jeffries. Covered by Alfred Jackson. Jeffries, what a great catch he just makes here. And watch where Moon puts the ball. The offensive line does the job. Jeffries, the ball is to the outside. There is just no chance for the defensive man, Jackson, number 41, to get there. Watch where the ball is thrown. Outside, he took his hand with it. That is a 15-yard advance. Fourth catch for that man, Hayward Jeffries. 93 for the season. First down at the 33. Off the draw, Lorenzo White battles his way to the 30-yard line, met by the middle linebacker, Richard Brown. Picked up three on the play. We're set for an update. Let's go to Bob Costas. Well, in Pittsburgh, those old rivals, the Bengals and the Steelers, going at it. The game is meaningless in terms of the playoffs, but Bubby Brister's having himself a good day. Here's his second touchdown pass to rookie Keith Cash out of Texas that covered 19 yards and the Steelers take a 17-10 lead early in the fourth, Marv. All right, Bob, minute 20 down by and the fourth here in Cleveland. And Houston trailing Cleveland 14 to 10, but on the move, second and seven at the Browns 30-yard line. Moon, it is picked off. It is intercepted by Eric about that here it comes here drew hill is the man he's throwing the ball to but turner never sees turner he sees the defensive man fall down who is hilliard throws the ball intercepted beautiful play the browns take over at their 22 yard line for the rookie from ucla eric turner it is his second interception of the season kevin Mack refusing to go Too bad we got helicopters flying around out here. That was just just a super run by Mac. Left hand side of the screen. Fakes going to his left, comes back to his right. And look at the poor tackling. Put your head down, diving. Bo Orlando 26. But well, you got you got to hit these guys. Wrap their arms around them and hit them low. Mac running for 15, 14 carries, 70 yards for Kevin Mac and a first down for 37. Kozar goes sideline and has Reggie Langhorn, but a very short pickup. Darrell Lewis made the stop. Twelve and a half remaining. In this fourth quarter, we scan the Dr. Pepper 10-minute ticker. Atlanta leads Seattle. Incidentally, as, as we mentioned earlier, if Seattle loses, that is bad news 
for the Cleveland Browns. They need Seattle to remain alive in terms of a, a wild card position. If Seattle loses, it eliminates Cleveland. The old 8-8 eight eight theory. Yes. <laughs> we'll get to that in, in an hour from now. No, I'll get to it tonight. <laughs> well, it takes uh, the Browns out of a possible uh, tiebreaker situation, which will be uh, positive. Good hit by Lathan on Hoard. They need four teams going eight and eight, which means the Browns have to win their final two. Miami has to lose its last two. The Jets have to lose to New England, then beat Miami, and Seattle must win its final two games today against Atlanta and, and the LA Rams. That way, all four clubs will finish it at eight and eight, and the Browns will end up going to the wild card because of a better conference record than the Jets and the Seahawks. Kozar completing at midfield. Langhorn stopped by Johnson. And Reggie Langhorn with his third reception. We're just seeing Kozar get the ball where he has to get it into in a hurry. Here comes Langhorn across the field. He had caught back on the inside. Robertson, number 31, as he gets caught to the inside, he lets Langhorn go by. And once he goes by, Kozar got the ball in. He's throwing the ball very well. It has been a terrific day for Bernie Kozar. He's 22 for 30, 183 yards, two touchdowns, intercepted once, so he's turned it from the, uh, the difficult game against Denver where he did not have much help from the offensive line last week. Kevin Mack for a couple, driven back. Sean Jones with the tackle. Reminder next Sunday. The final regular season Sunday in the NFL. It all gets started right here on NBC with NFL Live, 12.30 Eastern Time, and a lineup that includes games that uh, will have uh, playoff uh, implications. Jets, Miami, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, New England, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Tampa Bay, and then the 4 o'clock games, Kansas City playing at the L.A. Raiders and Denver at San Diego. 9.45 to go. In the fourth here at Cleveland Stadium. Browns 14 and the Oilers 10. Kozar able to step up, throws the long ball. Brian Brennan, the intended receiver, covered by Bo Orlando. You know, this is one of those, one of those uh, the plays where Brennan goes down the middle and Kozar just overshoots him. Look at this. Brian Brennan is wide open. Nobody near him. Brennan did catch a touchdown pass, a short-range toss, an eight-yarder, back in the second quarter. His shoulder's coming back after his x-rays. He's got his shoulder pads in his hand. That is not a good sign for Houston. But he is heading back to the bench. It is a third and nine. Out of midfield, big rush. Kozar taken down at the 44. Lee Williams comes up with his third sack of the season, third of the day for the Oilers. Lee Williams back from a broken broken arm injury. He's back after missing six weeks of action. The guy that makes the play is Bubba McDowell, number 25. He's the guy, he just, they sent too many people. They had no one to block him. Bubba McDowell gets there. Lee Williams gets as a recipient of the sack. And Brian Hansen will punt from his 30. Pat Coleman is back. Good punt. It is mocked and then recovered. And Coleman is just thrown back the other way. <laughs> Able to stay on his feet. Clay Matthews made the stop. Pat Coleman wrapped around pretty good and very fortunate to hold on. By the Diamond Tennis Bracelet. This Christmas, give her the gift of love. Diamond. And by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor orders. Welcome back to Cleveland. Marv Albert with a, a chilly Paul McGuire. You all right, Paul? I'm doing fine. I'm really having a good time. This is a hard-hitting game. You know, first half we had all that. We had some offensive scoring. Nothing in the second half. The defenses have taken over this football game. And if you like defense, you've got to love this game. Houston has taken over at their 19 with 9.02 remaining. In the fourth quarter, they're down by four points. Moon's pass could not 
could not be held by Lorenzo White. It'll be a second and 10 of the 19. Now we see Moon working out of the shotgun. Lorenzo White goes to the outside. And look at this pass. It just lo almost looked like it died. It never got to him. You can't run till you catch the ball, Lorenzo. Incidentally, Warren Moon is two completions away from the NFL record most completions in a single season. Dan Marino with 378 back in 1986. Warren Moon about to wipe that out. Make it one completion away, but that is a short pickup. Good coverage by Alfred Jackson on Hayward Jeffries. Dave Jeffries, there's another guy closing in on 100 catches. It'd be nice to do. Very select company there. And that's the fifth catch of the day by Jeffries. Houston has been an excellent fourth quarter team. And as we illustrated earlier, the Browns have not. It's a third down and five at the 24. Cleveland 14, and Houston 10. They are short of a setup here in Cleveland, but uh, they have been loud throughout the day. And a first down is picked up. It's spin move by Jeffries following the catch. Well, there's the record, isn't it, for Moon? now tied Dan Marino 378 completions for Warren Moon and we'd like to welcome those who have been watching Seattle and Atlanta fourth quarter Atlanta leads Seattle by the score 26 to 6 Marv Albert with Paul McGuire from Cleveland seven and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter the Browns 14 and the Houston Oilers 10 Houston, first and ten from the 33. Lorenzo White is stopped back behind the line by James Jones. James Jones, a rookie out of Northern Iowa. Cleveland Browns with a very young uh, front line. Rob Burnett, second-year player from Syracuse. Jones, the rookie from Northern Iowa. Theo Sangapulatelli, the rookie from San Diego State. Anthony Pleasant in there. Time to time, second-year man from from Tennessee State. Theo Sagapulatelli. What a tough name to say with cold lips, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Second down and nine at the 34. And it's White. On an inside handoff, he's able to throw tackles. Beautiful run by Lorenzo White. Alfred Jackson made the stop. Well, Alfred Jackson makes the stop, but well, by the time Lorenzo White gets to him, he runs over Alfred Jackson's head. Here he comes back to the to his left. Just a super run. Braggs is running blind. Watch his head. Bam! He runs over Jackson, falls down. But they're inside the 50-yard line, back down almost to the 46-yard line. They're on a drive. They're just coming inside of six minutes. Touchdown puts them ahead by three. And from time to so time, we've seen the Oilers out of the run and shoot go with the counter. This is for 18 yards. Lorenzo White setting the first and 10 at the 46. Moon able to complete. Drew Hill on the catch. And now Warren Moon with his 379th completion. This season, that is an NFL record. But Drew Hill is hurt. So Hill is down. We'll take a break. Back after this. It's brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call Domino's Pizza right now, and you'll be enjoying a hot, delicious pizza when the game is over. Drew Hill shaken up, although he appears to be all right, but he's been replaced by Leonard Harris. Houston second and seven at the Cleveland 43. And Jeffries had it knocked away and a penalty flag is down. He was covered by, by Alfred Jackson and the interference coming up 
against Jackson. You know why this is called? Because Jackson, as he goes up with Jeffries, he makes body contact on the way up. Number 41. Jackson is not complaining about it. Now watch number 41 on Jeffries. Here it goes here. See the body contact? Well, when you hit him with your body first, the official is standing there, and he grabs, well, he actually grabs his face mask too, but that's incidental. But you can't make that body contact on the way up, and that's what happens. Now, does Jeffries get credit for that catch? No. Okay. Not in this league. Oh, I just check it. Try to help get to 100. In the CBA, he gets there. <laughs> it's a first down at the 33. Cleveland 14 and Houston 10. Here's Gibbons on the end around. So Gibbons taking a handoff. <laughs> Matthews making the stop. You think Cleveland's not tough? Newsom on that play, number 22, actually hits his own man, Jackson, and knocks him down. Drew Hill's all right. He can get back in the game. He just got popped a little bit. Yes, the Fab Four certainly have been taking their shots in recent weeks. Ernest Gibbons wearing that plexiglass visor protecting the broken nose. Hill has been hit hard, as has Jeffries and Duncan. It's a second and five. At the 28, back to the ground. Here's White. And a flag is tossed. White gunning for that first down marker. This one against Houston. Jerry Markbright is behind the play, and he is the referee who calls the penalty. From behind the play, he saw the holding in the offensive line. Number 63, offense. Mike Mancha. penalty. But that Second was down. called by Jerry Markbright. He's the guy that throws the flag. Talk about a penalty that hurts. There's Monchock right there, number 63. And there is the hole. He is holding Michael Dean Perry, number 92. And is set back to a second. 15 at the 38. Four minutes and 15 seconds. Remaining in the fourth quarter. Gibbons has a first down and some more. Ernest Gibbons scampering out of bounds. Covered by Alfred Jackson. So Gibbons going for 20. That is third catch of the day and look at when you see Gibbons he's the man in the slot and they're playing zone defense and when he runs underneath number 22 Vince Newsom never gets there he gets actually gets picked off on the play another first down they're inside the 20 yard line again Houston field goal no good and it's a first down of the 18 there you see the distribution hill with seven catches Jeffries with six Jeffries now has 95 for the season, Moon is 24 for 37, 239 yards. And Moon able to complete once again down inside the 10. Drew Hill on the reception, covered by the free safety, Vince Newsom. Next Saturday, the Houston Oilers will take on the, the Giants at the New Jersey Meadowlands, so another test. Perhaps another cold day for the uh, Houston Oilers. That'll be next Saturday, starting with NFL Live at 12 noon Eastern time. Second down and one. The ball is at the nine. Back on the 17th of November, Houston came from behind to beat Cleveland and Houston in a tough ball game. Well, another tough one here this afternoon. Cleveland 14 and Houston 10. Here's White. It's the first down. It'll be a first and goal for the Oilers. See, here's the situation with Houston now. Now, they ran that play there. The ball is on the what? Just at the six-yard line. Give them almost to the five. 345 and counting in the game. Here's where tight end would be helpful in this offense, Mark. You want to be able to run the ball as much as you can. Get at least down to the two-minute warning and try to score on the ground. You've got four downs to do it in. But they may have to end up throwing the football, which they don't want to do. And Lorenzo White has run well. 
Taking over here in the second half for Alan Pinkett. Here's White, tripped up. He wore a moon dance. Please get in. Please get in. But, you know, he, he, they, they are doing the right thing. They're running right at the Browns. Don't try to string it out. If you try to string it out, you don't have the people to do that. You have to run in. And you've got some old, all pros over there. Now watch where they run. Matthews is there blocking. Monchak is there blocking. So you're looking at two all pros sitting there. That's where you want to run the football. Run as much time off the clock. Now you're inside 240. There's a second. And goal down at the two. thing down through that that slot <laughs> all you gotta do is hang on to it might carry you out of bounds and out of the end zone but you know you're in a situation where it was second down in two now watch how watch him fire this ball i mean that thing is zipping there's just no chance for hill to catch it it's going first of all his hands are cold it's very cold down on that field now you're in a third down and two situation again you have to score a touchdown it's a drive that began with nine minutes remaining. It started at the Houston 19. Moon throws. And let's see, was he Jeffrey? Yes, he was. Touchdown, Hayward Jeffrey. He did it in front of Alfred Jackson. He was in the end zone, pushed out. But the official with the indication and the Houston Oilers have come from behind and they now lead by the score of 16-14. And this play takes a long time to develop because watch, watch how long Jeffries is out here. He's out working. Now he goes just to the outside, takes Jackson out, comes down along the line of scrimmage. The ball is in the end zone. There's no question about it being touchdown. But Moon had to wait for Jeffries to make that move to the outside and then the move back to the inside. Perfect. It's in review, but you can't overturn it from that angle because the ball is in the end zone. Jeffries knows he has touchdown. And that gives him 96. Here it is. Watch how long this play takes. Moon runs to his right. Okay, then he comes back and he throws left. Jeffries has made the move to the outside. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage with Jackson, but the ball was in his left hand. Look at it again. The ball is in his left hand. His left hand is over the end line. There is the touchdown. All it has to do is break the plane. He's pulled back into the playing field. It's touchdown. Seventh touchdown catch of the season for Hayward Jeffrey. Second thrown today by Warren Moon. He now has 22 for the After season. Review, the play stand. Touchdown. That caps off the long drive. 13 plays, 81 yards. They, they use seven minutes and 17 seconds. And the important drive for the extra point by Al Del Greco. Don't count the Browns out with the Kozar. He's having an excellent day. Cleveland 17, or rather a Houston 17, and Cleveland 14 with 2.19 left in the fourth. Houston has come from behind, and they now lead Cleveland by the score of 17-14 with 2 minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Lynn James and Lattenberry now are the deep men as Al Del Greco gets set to kick it off. And it is must by James out to the 15 and hit out of bounds at about the 17 yard line. Scott Kozak get on a number of special teams tackles. Oh, uh, Marv, this is beautiful. Watch this. This guy here is Bruce Matthews, the center. This guy out here is Clay Matthews, his brother. And watch what happens. He'll come out. Bruce Matthews is the guy that makes this play work for Warren Moon. When I tell you about how long it took to set it up, watch the center. He comes out. He blocks his brother. Bruce on Clay. They get the touchdown. And now Bernie Kozar, who has had a good day, 22 for 31, needs a long drive as he starts out from the 18 and is able Let's see, is, yes it is, a completed pass to Brian Brennan, covered by Leithen, 
and Smith it is short of the first down and we are now down to two minutes remaining in the fourth. 14 and a little surprised too because I thought Kozar might have been able to call a timeout to, to, to get another play in before the two minutes. But he didn't. Here they are. Both clubs have three timeouts remaining. A dump off to Hill. Trying to get out of bounds. Has the first down. Stopped by Richard Johnson. See, here's a play, Barbara, where I would take a timeout. Reason being, you're, you're running the ball, you pick up about 10 to 12 yards. It takes so much time to get the teams back in the huddle. You have three timeouts. Go ahead and use one there. Look at what's happened. You're down uh, to like a minute and 30 now. You've already lost 20 seconds on this play. It's not worth it. And a first down from the 40. And Brennan gets out of bounds. That's a first down run out by McDowell. Heads up play by Brian Brennan. He gets the ball. He got as much out of the play as you could possibly get, and that's all he's asked to do. Bernie goes back. He sees Brennan coming underneath. He pops him with the ball. Now watch. This is all he can get. Don't get greedy. You got your first down. You're in their territory. Overtime. Well, the Cleveland Browns are on the brink of elimination from the playoff picture. The Jets beaten by New England if Miami wins. It's over for the Jets. The loss by Seattle ends playoff hopes for Seattle and Cleveland. Here's Ford. Oh. And he makes his way out of bounds. What a great block by Jackson. Michael Jackson on Bubba McDowell. I mean, he just leveled him. Michael Jackson comes back and makes a super play. Your screen. Watch what happens after Ward catches the ball. Bing, he's coming out. See 25. Goodbye, 25. Here it is. Hello. Nice and high. Beautiful block. Either guy gets hurt. And it's 12. Heading in the fourth. Cleveland down by three. Houston showing blitz. Kozar has it batted back. William Fuller, who has had a sensational day with a couple of sacks, and now a pass rejection getting a Hit piece it right of it. the chest. <laughs> now look at the Dr. Pepper, 10-minute ticker. Dallas moving in front of Philadelphia, as we mentioned earlier. The winner there can clinch a wild card with a victory next week. Seattle about to be beaten by Atlanta, Detroit. In front of Green Bay, Jets lose to New England in a field goal festival. So if Miami beats San Diego, Jets are out of it. Here's a draw play. Leroy Horde has a first down getting inside the 35-yard line. And timeout has been taken by Cleveland. A minute two remaining in the fourth quarter. Houston by three. We'll be right back. Well, Cleveland with two timeouts remaining. Houston has its three. The snow is now falling heavily here at Cleveland Stadium. There were some 20,000 plus short of a sellout. But this crowd has been heard right throughout. The Browns on the brink of elimination from the playoffs, but no matter what, it's been a terrific turnaround season for this franchise. And they'd love to pull this one out. Hosea completes the hole. Hoare gets to the 32-yard line, stopped by Lamar Latham. From the Houston point of view, they are still vying for home field advantage, also for number two seed in the playoffs. Home field advantage will be predicated on what happens tonight between Buffalo and Indianapolis. Down to 35 seconds remaining. As Kozar takes a long look and is able to throw it down, and we get a, uh, get a flag on the play. Will that be uh, illegal grounding? Let's see. It's intentional grounding, and, and, and the, the thing about it is, was he, in, was he tackled? I guess in the grass doesn't make any sense anymore. But Kozar, when he throws, Ward is the only guy back there with him. He doesn't get out. Watch it. Here it is. He throws it, and the only guy around is on his left. Over here is an offensive lineman. Watch this. There are no offensive backs in, in the area. They call intentional grounding. 
it sets it back to a third down and 19. 31 seconds remaining in the fourth. The ball at the Houston 42. And the Browns trailing by three points. Christmas, Tandy. Oh, but they should have had safeties deep. I was talking to Brian Brennan yesterday, and I said, how's it going? He said, not good. But he said, well, I swear he's not good. He said, well, I dropped a touchdown pass, and they're not talking to me, and they're not throwing to me, and I'm not playing. Now he's playing. That was the fifth catch of the day for Brennan. What a setting here in Cleveland. 23 seconds remaining in the fourth. First down at the 12, Houston 17, Cleveland 14. Kozar looking in zone, now running for it. He's got a first down inside the one. Now you got to call it final timeout. They call their final timeout with eight seconds left to go. But what do you do? Do you go for the touchdown and try to win the ball game, or do you get yourself? A field goal to tie it, to take it into overtime. What do you think he'll do? And that is the, the final timeout for the Browns. You see, with eight seconds, Marv, he can still throw the ball. He can still throw the ball one time into the end zone because they do have a first down. So he can throw and then come back and kick the field goal if you, if you want to. So that's exactly what, what I think they're going to do. The ball placed down at the two. Eight seconds remaining. You hear these people yelling, all or nothing? <laughs> you don't have to be coaching the team, pal. I would say the tendency would be to go for it, but uh, as you say, a little bit more difficult decision when you're down on the field as as uh, that man is. Now they're going to measure this, but they have the first down. They have it by almost a yard. Houston wanted to see it to make sure. Chris Dishman is there. But here's the situation, too. Now, you know, you, you don't say, well, we'll just we'll go for it in the end zone and, you know, let's win the ball game and not kick the field goal. Well, they've come too far to let this game out, out of whack, even though they may not have a shot at the playoffs. Doesn't make any difference. These guys want to win a football game and every opportunity they can. So the one thing he's just telling Brady, if it's not there, throw it away. The lone beat back is Leroy Horn. Eight seconds remaining. And Kozar, what is this? I don't know, unless he did not see anyone. Well, miscommunication on a timing pattern with four seconds remaining. Well, you had Slaughter was jammed right at the line of scrimmage. He was trying to get into the corner of the end zone, and that was just thrown up right into the corner. Bernie didn't even take any time. He just took the ball. Bernie Kozar took the ball and just threw it. Slaughter never got off the line of scrimmage. This will be an 18-yard field goal attempt from Matt over. First year player from Louisiana Tech. His first attempt of the day. And here it is for the time. Missed it. So good. From 18. He slipped when he went to kick the ball. I mean, this is like, it's a first year player, but you've got to make sure your footing, you've got to make sure everything is perfect for you. You've got all the time in the world to kick the ball. Because even a penalty doesn't hurt you. You don't have to go up and rush it. Even if they would have been penalized back, it wouldn't have made any difference on the play. And he just slipped as he went to kick the ball. And Matt Stover has had a good season. 15 for 19 coming in. But what a, a bleak ending for what appeared to be a terrific finish for the Cleveland Browns. Time has run out. Here is another look at it. 
Well, he actually, he falls down, but I, you know, it, his left foot slipped a little bit, not much, but he just hooked this thing badly. The holes seemed to be fine. The laces were fine. So the Cleveland Browns are now officially eliminated from wild card possibility. They dropped to six and nine. Houston, on the other hand, winning one on the road, winning one under adverse weather conditions, and going to a record of 11 and four. We'll be back to wrap it in a moment.